Hello traders and welcome to NAF's weekly market compass where we help you navigate the week ahead. Our weekly market compass is brought to you by our head trader Troy who in between assisting traders and taking the next step in their careers provides weekly and daily guidance in our live trading room every single day. Before we get into this week's guidance we need to remind you that trading does carry significant risk and all information in this video is just provided for educational purposes only and is not offer or recommendation to trade future stocks, options, or forex. From everyone here at NAFT, good hunting out there and happy trading. Here's Troy. All right, so let's look at uh, the entire week here from a macro perspective. Today's Tuesday, January 16th, and you can see my screen here. This is forexfactory.com's calendar. You'll see at 8.30 here. Uh, we should let me just refresh that we have the Empire State Manufacturing Index which came in below expectations and below the previous 17.7 uh, the Empire State of course is New York uh, and if they can make money manufacturing anything in New York uh, that's very very good um, this is not a good number because the first because uh, labor costs are very high in New York uh, you see a lot more manufacturing going on in the southern and mid midwestern states uh, New York is just an expensive state state to do business and so uh, when we see this number starting to go down usually that's the first place we're going to see um, contraction is in those high cost states uh, so this is not a good a good number um, not excited about this number at all. Um, that being said, it's a uh, orange item, which means it's a medium impact, which will probably have very little effect on the overall uh, S&P or the uh, overall market in general. But this is a macro thing that I'm going to continue to watch. I don't want to see this continuing to decline because this will filter down into the lower cost states over time. Uh, that's, so this is sort of the first or second chink in the armor of the uh, manufacturing um, part of the economy. Uh, that being said, nothing really much today of interest. Uh, the the uh, Swiss National Bank Chairman Jordan speaks at 12 noon. Uh, we don't really follow the uh, Swissy, uh, Swiss dollar, um, so it's really not going to affect our specific trading. Uh, today that being said uh, so just really not much news going on today we jump to tomorrow uh, there's a bunch of Canadian news uh, at 10 a.m. Um, basically their Fed is speaking and setting overnight rates in a rate statement mo monetary policy Bank of Canada so big big movement will be in the CAD dollar um, and you know how Canada does we are so close our economies are so intertwined it'll be interesting to see from again from a macro perspective what's going on there with oil prices ticking up um, that's all good for the Canadian um, for the Canadians there because they have all the oil sands etc as prices go up those marginal areas become profitable uh, and so that's all good uh, I can see um, them raising rates uh, we'll see the expectation is to raise by a quarter point as you can see here's the expectation as previous was uh, interest rate was at 1% we do have the housing market index again this is something I particularly pay attention to again to try to get a feel for the macro economy uh, that will be at 10 a.m. tomorrow uh, otherwise the other red items are for, from the Aussies um, the employment change and unemployment change at 730 you will see a 6a pop around that time again that's sort of off hours trading for us uh, but 730 for you guys who like trading in the evenings um, there will be some action around the, uh, the, the 6a uh, tomorrow evening so uh, maybe some good action there um, as the Aussie numbers come out on employment uh, Thursday what else do we have? Uh, Thursday is going to be so again. Some of my favorite numbers are coming out on Thursday. Building permits, housing starts, manu Philadelphia manufacturing uh, index, uh, and unemployment claims. So a lot of big stuff coming out on Thursday morning at 8:30. Building permits being the big one. Uh, you can see that uh, previous was 130 or 130 million. Uh, projection is 1.29 million. We'll see what the actual actually ends up being. Again. Uh, building permits will affect the S&P, so we will see some volatility come in, um, but it's not a huge, huge mover. Um, 
building permits are more important even than starts because the permits are so expensive these days that nobody buys a permit unless they intend on actually building. So it used to be uh, you would have a building permits might be high and, the, and starts would be low and sometimes they would never start. But that's not the case anymore. Uh, permits have gotten so expensive that very few people speculate on uh, you know, on buying a permit. They, they don't just buy a permit, they wait till they have financing in place before they buy the permit, and then they start. Uh, Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index is also building off of the uh, Empire State uh, Manufacturing Index. Again, a Philly Fed, you're moving further south into the New England states below New York. Uh, as manufacturing, you can see here, Expected is uh, less than previous, and, and it'll be interesting to see what that number is. Again, this is sort of watching the filterization as the higher cost manufacturing states, um, you know, go for, start slowing down, then the, then the next low cost or next high cost, I should say, starts slowing down, and it sort of filters down through uh, the U.S. Uh, into the southern states, which is of course the lowest cost uh, manufacturing uh, areas. Uh, in the United States. Unemployment claims also be an interesting number. Again, these are medium impact um, other than, of course, uh, the building permits at 8.30. Uh, because of the holiday yesterday, uh, oil inventories got shifted by a day. Um, so normally, oil, crude oil inventories are given on Wednesdays. It shifts by a day and goes up by half an hour, 11 a.m., uh, Thursday after or Thursday morning, uh, crude oil inventories will be released. Uh, again, lots of volatility comes into the oil uh, futures market uh, as that number is released. Same with natural gas, just more so in uh, crude oil, 11 a.m. So that's the big number we really need to be careful about um, if we're trading crude oil around 11 a.m. Uh, Friday, not a lot going on. On Friday, got some consumer confidence. Um, consumer sentiment and inf inflation expectation numbers. Again, these are great macro numbers, and I pay attention to those as a macro. They're not going to affect the, the, the intraday trading very much, if at all. Uh, the only red item on Friday is, of course, uh, the British pound. Our, our Great Britain has retail sales uh, month over month, coming in at 4.30 a.m. Um, just briefly talking about time of day to trade. Uh, usually about 3 a.m. is when the London market opens, 2.30 a.m. The volumes start picking up. So if you're an overnight guy, that's probably the best time when there's the most liquidity is between 2.30 and 3 a.m. all the way through the New York session. Those are usually some very good trading times uh, to be trading. All right, let's take a look at some charts. Minimize that, get that out of the way. Uh, let's go to some longer term charts here. Um, starting with the ES, I'm going to cover the ES and the NQ since uh, uh, Jason is under the weather um, fighting the flu. Um, all time highs, holy cow. It's like uh, I went on vacation, but the market didn't. Woo! Man, big move up here. We're coming into the highs, all-time highs. You'll see I've got some uh, numbers up here where we did have a, a BRL at the very high from yesterday or overnight. Uh, we have a couple of FIB extensions up a little bit higher. Those have been added. Um, this thing is just on a tear, um, absolutely on a tear. Um, one of, uh, obviously on vacation, you have time to sort of sit on a boat and do nothing. Uh, so I, of course I took a book about demographics. Um, if you're into demographics and how demographics affect the entire world economic cycle, very, very interesting book. Um, and what's interesting is that they are saying that we have a, uh, several cycles are coming due in the next three or four years. Uh, there's some business cycles, political cycles, et cetera, et cetera. And they're projecting that we are going to see a major, major pullback. Um, it's kind of interesting. You know, the market has and, and continues to just defy gravity here. Uh, I don't like trading the ES at these numbers, at these levels. Um, I feel that there is very little support underneath, and there's certainly no resistance above. 
Uh, we also we have seen a little bit of volume um, come in since the new year, uh, a little bit here. But you can see on this volume chart that uh, on balance, although we are sort of basing right in here, and we have you know, marginal volume, we're not seeing the spikes in volume with each consecutive new high. Uh, this is a little bit disconcerting, and uh, you've heard me talk about this before. Um, you know, one of my concerns is that the volume sort of looks like that, um, with the volume slowly declining. Now, we have had a little uptick in volume here uh, oh, since the new year. That's at least encouraging, but it is a little bit concerning uh, that you know we had a lot of volume coming in here on this. Uh, new high area here, and then it's just sort of tapered off. Now, we may be building some volume coming in here. That's a good thing, uh, but I am concerned about the ES, and uh, whenever things don't start to um, add up, uh, and I, I feel uh, some sort of anxiety about that, I'm not going to trade it, okay? So uh, you may see an intraday trade uh, on the ES, but it's probably going to be a scalp trade and taking an intraday setup because I just don't like the macro uh, scenario here uh, with the e with the, uh, uh, the ES. And that, that goes right into the NQ as well. You see the NQ is just in nosebleed territory. Um, again, have some additional FIB extension levels uh, projected out here. Um, same, same scenario. Um, not, just not excited about it. Uh, and and uh, that certainly flows through to the Russell as well. Uh, the Russell is a little bit more interesting. If you scrunch, if I scrunch this down, you can see that it has, uh, it, it comes and backfills a little bit better. So you have a little area that went sideways, we broke out, we come back, we again starting to backfill, break out. It at least has a, a stair step sort of thing going on here. And I do like it better from a perspective chart perspective versus the ES, which is just basically going straight up. Uh, very, very little back filling uh, going on. A little bit right here, um, but you know, in the, in the what we call it air, uh, is that there's just no, uh, there's absolutely no heavy support, um, you know, down in this area. There's just nothing comes all the way back to here when you finally get some volume. You know, that's uh, 300 S&P points. Now, that's kind of scary. Uh, so anyway, anyhow, um, a little bit cautious on the ES, the NQ, and the RTY. Um, I'm going to jump over to crude oil. Crude oil, again, broke out, broke out of the 59. We were, had a long, long-term range between 52 and 59 for just forever. We finally broke out of that and it is going up. Uh, again, um, I don't understand this move at all. Um, there is so much supply available um, that makes life extremely difficult to uh, understand why prices are going up. Again, crude and gold, I've been using those traditionally as um, ways to measure fear and greed in the market. I'm not a big trader of crude or gold. Um, and this is showing me that, hey, something's going on. Something is changing. Uh, it's interesting that this is happening. Uh, uh, gold, uh, you have a similar situation. We um, ha have, have been under 1,300 for a long time and prior to that even. And we finally broke above that in December. Uh, some fear is coming into the market. Uh, again, this could be North Korea, could be Saudi Arabia, a whole host of things. Uh, it could be uh, Trump tweeting uh, stupid stuff. Um, I, I, I wonder sometimes where, <laughs> what he's thinking when he uh, decides. I don't think he's thinking when he actually gets his uh, phone out and tweets. Uh, <laughs> anyhow. Uh, Gold is definitely saying, hey, we've got some fear coming into the market. Uh, rhetoric with North Korea, et cetera, has certainly been amped up. And uh, Trump's political, uh, or I should say foreign, foreign relations certainly hasn't been very good lately.